Hello. Now this is probably going to be a long video. Um, <clears throat> many, many years ago, in 1987, I had a book called Detecting the Fakes by Robin Lumsden. It was part of the A Collector's Guide to Third Rank Military series that I've reviewed some on, on YouTube a few videos ago. Original book was in blue covers, originally published in 1987, reprinted in 1992 with the same blue covers. When I got it, it was completely disappointing because it told me nothing about fake German badges that were available even in 1987. Unfortunately, Lumsden stuck to showing repro badges of the lowest, poorest quality that were made by somebody in Gloucester. Now, at the same time in 87, Nicholas Meridji was still on the go and Meridji's badges were top quality, die struck, but they were expensive at the time. Uh, a Nicholas Meridji badge of the Iron Cross, Iron Cross second class was about £4.95. <clears throat> the, the badge from one of the, sh the shop in Gloucester was next to nothing. In fact, the guy in the Gloucester shop used to sell repro campaign medals, German imperial decorations, Third Reich decorations, but they were all a very, very low quality cast pot metal and the combat badges had a thin needle pin on the back of them. And as soon as you turned them over and looked at the back, you knew they were fakes. In fact, the guy in the Gloucester shop didn't actually sell them with the intent to deceive. They were sold as theatre things. So he, he never sold them as original. And that was borne out by the prices. Now at the time, a Meridji Iron Cross second class was like 4 95 The Gloucester shop was selling any 20 German badges or medals of your choice from a list for £7.50. Okay. He did some absolutely fantastic stuff. And to this day, if you ever see a cast plated metal World War I South African bilingual victory medal named to a private Begley of the 10th SAI, that's one from the Gloucester shop. He did he did literally all sorts of stuff, okay, but they were never made with the intent to fraud. Unlike the cigarette cases that I've shown you in a YouTube video that are coming out of Poland, which have been fraudulently etched with fake names and fake regiments, these are done with the intent to deceive people, okay? <clears throat> the badges out of the shop in Gloucester back in 87 were not intended to deceive. When you picked them up, looked at the back, you knew they were wrong. But unfortunately, <clears throat> Lumsden used these badges in his Detecting the Fakes guide, which in 1987 were out of date and he could have used better quality badges, but for some reason chose not to do it. Um, so I sold that book years and years and years ago. So I picked up another copy on eBay the other day. Originally, when I went to look for it, I saw the 2005 reprint, which is the current reprint, okay? And as I've said with all these A Collector's Guide books, they've now been all given a black cover to make them uniform. Now, unfortunately, from what I've read, the 2005 guide, which is the current one that's available, has never been updated. So it first came out in 87, was reprinted in 92, was never updated, and then between 92, 2005, was reprinted again, and again it was never updated. Um, I saw the black covered one on eBay, and I'm astonished that it's selling for £30 a time. The original one cost £9.95. So the other day, <clears throat> cruising through eBay, and I found a reprint with blue covers for £4.99. So I bought it, and I've got it. So I'm going to do a review of this book um, and tell you why I don't recommend you buy it. And we'll, we'll have a look through it. Uh, but first, there's a couple of reviews of how, how this book is out of date, <coughs> or the reprint is. There's a couple of reviews that I've found, which I'll read them out. One's a British one, one's an American one. Now, when you buy these A Collector's Guide 2 books, they tend to be cellophane wrapped. And when you see the picture on the likes of eBay of the current black covered book, you're buying it based on what you can see on the cover. Okay. Now, people that pick up this A Collector's Guide 2 detecting the fakes, you're looking at it, and you think that's going to be a really good book that's going to tell me everything i need to know no it will tell you absolutely nothing about the current top quality fakes okay even when this book was new in 1987 it was of no use because it only concentrated on fake badges and medals 
that were made by someone in Gloucester who I actually knew as far back as 1980. Okay, so this is the book that came. Anyways, hang on a minute. Now, Detecting the Fakes by Robin Lumsden. This in the blue covers is the 1987 and 92 item. This particular one is the 1992 reprint. It's since been re republished. 2005, all black covers, different photographs on it. The, the, the all black covers one's got a picture of a German soldier and some badges and medals and stuff. So when you look at this book, you're going to look at the cover and you're going to think, <clears throat> that's going to tell me everything I need to know. I'm going to buy that. Problem is, the modern one is like £30 to buy. Very, very expensive. It's vastly overpriced. It's never been updated. And I would say, avoid it because it won't tell you anything at all. And we'll go into why. Uh, but first, these are a couple of reviews that I found. Now, given the date of the reviews, they obviously refer to the currently available black covered one that you see on eBay. This is from 2007, a British review. Unfortunately, this title was originally written in 1989 when the fakes in question were, were vastly inferior to those encountered today, which they actually weren't. It's just that Lumsden chose the really shittest quality repros to show in his book. Okay. I would imagine that even the most basic newbie will find little in this book to help them now. This is an American one from 2009. And again, it refers to the current reprint that you see on eBay for 30 quid. Stay away from detecting the fakes, which is by Robin Lumsden. That book is so crudely done and was outdated when it first came out. It is of about, z it is of almost zero value. On a scale of one to 100, with 100 being the best, I would rate the book at, a, at about a 0 .003. And this is because upon looking thoroughly through that book, it taught me about how not to use it as a reference guide. Now, Lumsden's book, 19, 1992, I've earmarked a little page here, and it says, where the, where the pictures are concerned, unfortunately, and this is, where, this is where it's of no fucking use whatsoever, the badges that he chooses, he shows an original badge, okay, but the fake badge that he shows is a crudely cast metal one from a shop in Gloucester. <clears throat> For example, these are the reverses of items shown in plate blah blah blah. The only real giveaway with this reproduction, which was purchased direct from the Gloucester manufacturer, is the thin needle pin typical of his copies. Okay, that's about a general assault badge. So it says, and I quote, the only real giveaway with this reproduction which the guys actually talk and shit because they're very poor quality and as soon as you handle them you know the reproductions okay so that's not the only real giveaway but it says the only real giveaway with this reproduction which was purchased direct from the Gloucester manufacturer is the thin needle pin typical of his copies okay which is one of them there and unfortunately he's used the Gloucester manufacturer's badges throughout the book to, to show that this is if you're going to find the reproduction then it's going to be one from the Gloucester shop and it's going to be of this quality, which was bullshit because there were far, far better copies available, but he just did not use them. And again, that's the back of an original General Assault uh, Combat clasp. That's one from the Gloucester shop with the thin pin on the back. And again, he uses original one, Gloucester shop one, original one, Gloucester shop one. Okay. And again, Drivers badges, cast metal, one from the Gloucester shop, original backs, and again, campaign shields, the one with these two cotter pin loops on the back, again, it's instinctive of the Gloucester shop one. Unfortunately, the repros from the Gloucester shop, cast metal copies, pieces of shit. So when this book was new, it was of no use whatsoever. So don't go buy anything, it's going to tell you everything you need to know. Now, in the Introduction, it says, um, where we are, and I quote, This work is a first in its field, and therefore is based entirely on personal experience built up over 20 years of collecting. But unfortunately, when it was written, it was completely of no use whatsoever. And all these years later, I would not suggest you buy it, okay? Now, as I've said, back in the day, when this was a new book, he should have chosen items from Nicholas Murigi, who's still in operation. Murigi's stuff averaged £4.95 for an Iron Cross second class. The shop in Gloucester that he refers to in the book and that the badges are from, we'll take a look through it, because I've actually, still to this day, got some of 
the Gloucester Shops copies, which we'll have a look at, which I've been using when I have a genuine badge and a fake badge, and I do a comparison. So you've actually seen a couple of them before, but not known about it. Anyway, the Gloucester Shop in question used to advertise in Exchange and Mark magazine. It was called the Curiosity Shop, and it was situated in Southgate Street in Gloucester. And the guy did all sorts of stuff. Um, predominantly, there were crude cast metal copies which were plated. And they were never intended to fool anybody. You could never ever pass them off as originals. And to this day, I fail to see why Lumsden chose to use those badges as a representative selection of fakes that were available. Because they weren't fakes as such. Y nobody would be fooled into believing they were original. So I can't imagine, I, well, I can't understand how Lumsden uses them as examples of fakes that were available. There were better quality fakes available, but he never used them, and I, I don't know why. Anyway, the shop in Gloucester, which, oh God, I, I used to wheel and deal with them back in the 1980s when I was still at school, went out of business in the 1990s. So, in, in the current reprint, it's referring to a business that closed down years and years ago. And you very rarely encounter any of these guys' badges from Gloucester now on the collector circuit because they've been overtaken by near-perfect copies. The guy in question was a bloke called John. John and his wife ran the curiosity shop in Gloucester and they used to make medals and badges on the premises. And in fact, they did all sorts of Victorian campaign medals, battle shields, combat awards, decorations, medals, all the way from Imperial Germany, the Third Reich, British Campaign and Gallantry Awards. They did all, literally all sorts of stuff. And at the time, you could have any 20 off his list for £7.50. Now, this was at the time when Meridji was selling proper die struck repro, iron cross second classes of £4.95. So maybe Lumsden chose to use them because they were cheap to buy in quantity. But I think it was a bad idea way back when to use those as typical examples of fake badges because they were theatrical prop things. They were, they were not fake as such. They were just very, very crudely done and you, you would never be deceived into believing they were originals. Unlike some of the stuff that turns up on eBay now, you could never ever pass them off as original pieces. So we'll take a look through this book in a bit better detail. It runs to 144 pages. This blue copy one, cost me £4 on eBay the other day. The current reprint is like 30 quid. In some places it asks them 40 quid for it. I would not recommend you buy this book. If you see this book on a shelf, you determine it by the cover, and you're going to think, that's a good book, it's going to tell me everything I know, then you're going to open it and go, what the fuck are all these pot metal cast copy pieces of shit? That's what it's about, okay? It, it tells you nothing, it's out of date. It was out of date when it was new. When I bought this book when it was new, I was thoroughly dis disappointed in it. Okay. So we'll take a look through it anyway. Collect this guide to Third Reich Militaria, Detecting the Fakes by Robin Lumsden. It's one of the worst ones in the A Collector's Guide too. Now, in my view, if you write A Collector's Guide to detecting the fakes, you should at least fucking update the book if you're going to reprint it. Okay. It's no good reprinting a book from 1987 that's never ever been updated because as the years go on to now, it is of absolutely no value to anybody now who wants to know what the fake badges are out there, okay? So in my opinion, I would urge you to not buy this book because it won't tell you anything, but we'll have a look through it anyway. So that's the refuse wagon gonna start beeping and holding in a minute, so. This may pick it up, this may not pick it up, but we'll have a look through this anyway. So, first off, this is a typical selection of John's Repro badges from the Curiosity Shop, similar styles of which are used in this book. This is one of John's close combat clasps. Okay, detail looks good on the front, but it's crude cast metal, which is plated, and all of John's badges were crudely finished on the back with this really shit needle pin. Now, there's no way you could pass this off as an original badge, okay? This is one of John's typical combat badges. Looks good from the front, but on the back, 
very crudely finished and again with a needle pin could never pass it off as original one of John's German medals looks good but when you hold it between the fingers of both hands there is an amount of giving it it's just pot, pot metal which has been given a, a bit of a coating okay and again another one of John's medals again it's crudely cast plated and there is an element of giving it and any cusps that he had to a metal were very crudely made with like badly cast mounts on them so that's a typical selection of badges that Lumsden kind of used to say this is the fakes that are available in England which wasn't it totally misrepresented the copy badges and these were never made with the intent to deceive anyone okay so it starts with Iron Cross, War Order, the German Cross, War Badge, Wound Badge, Campaign Shield, Campaign Cuff Title, Miscellaneous Awards, Civil Awards, Nazi Party Awards, Sport Badges, Presentation Cases, then it goes into Dress Daggers, Army, Navy, Luftwaffe, SA, SS, NSKK, NEPA, Custom Service, etc, etc. Then it goes through Headgear, Tunics, Insignia, Miscellaneous Regalia. Okay. Now when this book was new, 1987, Lumsden said it was, it's a first in its field and therefore based entirely on personal experience. And uh, this book is a reference in its own right. It's devoted entirely to the subject of fake detection and gives a working knowledge of terminology and abbreviations. But as I say, when it was new, it was a piece of shit. So we'll go through it. Orders and decorations. And if there's, if there's anything that I'll point out, I'll point it out. See, most, most reproductions of the Knight's Cross are easily detected, being of the one-piece die struck type in soft lead base or brittle glithy alloys. And again, he shows a 1957 German one, an original one, and this is what he uses as a fake. This is one of John's Gloucester shop ones, crudely cast with a pin on the back. So he gives the impression, does Lumsden, that if you're going to find a fake, that's what to look out for. Which completely misrepresented repro badges that were available at the time. There were far, far superior quality ones about. And again, an original war order of the German Cross and one of John's Curiosity Shop fakes from Gloucester pinned down the back of it and the fake at right is a flat single piece casting produced by a Gloucester dealer as a Fillmore stage prop so even Lumsden knew it was a Fillmore stage prop, 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 prop but he used it as an example of a fake badge now at the time, Nicholas Murigi was producing far superior copies than that. So it completely misrepresents what a copy German badge was back then. And again, originals and a Gloucester shop copy. And again, just, just as I've shown you, the back of an original clasp, one of John's Gloucester shop copies, and in 2014, there's one of John's shop copies. Exactly the same. There's no way you could pass that off as an original piece. And that, that, that badge there, in no way at all, represents the fake German badges that were available even in the 1980s. There were far superior badges about. And that's what makes this book really, really bad. And again... There's some more of John's fake badges. And again, with the wound badge, some genuine ones, and a crudely done Gloucester shop one. So it's a shame that he's used fake badges from exactly the same source. A Chalm shield, one of John's Gloucester shop shields, and again, all of John's shields had these two cut pin loop things cast into the back of them. And there's no way you could pass it off as an, as an original piece. You have miscellaneous military medals. And again, 
an original medal, one of John's shop medals. And I'll show you. This is this is a typical example of John's medal. The copy is cast in lead with a bronze wash and can be bent easily by mere finger pressure. And again, as I've said, it's just given a plating. And again, it's got a distinctive cast come mould mark around it, just like it shows you in the book back in 1987. No way you could pass them off as original. Unfortunately, he used those examples in his book. And again, the SA badge for Treffen. One of the Gloucester shop ones flat backed. So it's just a shame that he used those. Now for, for fake daggers, it doesn't actually show photographs of fake daggers. Okay. It, do, it doesn't in any way show photographs. He has a list of what he thinks are fake daggers. So he goes Luftwaffe and he has just a generic description of a fake one, but he doesn't actually show any photographs. Of, no, doesn't show any photographs, it goes through NEPA, NSFK, so there's no pictures of fake daggers. Okay. And it shows examples of original ones with engravings on them and stamped up. And then it goes into headgear. Let me see if I can pick anything out on this one. And again, German helmet decals. This is how far they've come. <clears throat> Fake decals are far inferior in quality to the real thing. They are normally applied in much the same way as model aircraft decals, i.e. by soaking in water and transferring directly onto the helmet. Most lack detail and all can be scratched off with the slightest pressure from a fingernail. Now, all these years later, they actually bake them into the helmet now, so even German helmet decals have advanced since this book was published. Okay, so this gives the impression that if you buy this book now, that's what you look for for fake German helmet decals. And if you can't scratch it, then you must it must be a real one. But of course, advances have been made since this book was actually published. So again, that's out of date. So it goes through fake decals and again poor quality <coughs> what he uses peak caps reproduction of Waffen SS officers cap and original army officers cap the fake is a modern West German army peak cap now it's been a long time since people fake caps using modern West German army caps they even manufacture caps to the correct pattern now with correct um, manufacturer's details inside them. It doesn't cover any of the post-war reproduction Errol-made or Austrian-made German caps. As far as he's concerned for this book, a fake German officer's peak cap is made from a West German army cap, and that is it. He doesn't make any references to any purpose-made reproduction German caps. So bear that in mind if you're purchasing this book. And again, all the pictures of reproductions out of a West German army officer's cap. Now, copy German army officer's peak caps have come a long way since this book was published. So again, it tells you nothing about German army officer's peak caps. And again, the M43 cap, there's an example of an original one. The fake M43 cap, he uses a West German army one. Now, even when this book was new, you could buy purpose-made reproduction M43 caps. eBay is full of reproduction M43 caps. It tells you nothing about modern reproduction M43 caps. Unfortunately, it uses West German caps as an example of a fake M43 cap, which to me is a cop-out, because anybody could have done that as an example. Instead of using a proper reproduction, he's used a West German army one. The side cap, again, an original Luftwaffe one, unfortunately, to show a fake Luftwaffe cap, 
he's used a West German Luftwaffe or a French cap and shown the markings inside it. He doesn't show purpose made reproduction ones. And tunics, original tunic. And again, do bear in mind when you buy this book, it says the majority of fake German combat tunics comprise modified West German military and police jackets and have been Nazified. And he goes through describing the West German army jackets now completely replaced by the brilliant quality repros that are coming out of China. So it's, it's completely outdated as referring to army tunics. Okay. Now insignia, again, where, ins where fake insignia is shown, it shows, these are all fakes, and again, it shows a cast metal one from the Gloucester shop. Reproduction cloth insignia which I reckon must have been from Nicholas Murigi because he was the only guy doing this sort of stuff in the 1980s. Collar patches, cuff titles, machine woven insignia. Again, badges. Miscellaneous regalia, buckles, well buckles have been fake for years, all of these buckles are original. Shows a couple of known copies with badly fitted clasps on it. Armbands, very very poor in relation to showing armbands. Felgen Darmory Gorget, and I think at the time the only guy doing reproduction gorgeous was Nicholas Murigi. So I don't know why the guy couldn't have got his combat badges and medals from Murigi. Deer badges. All original. And he goes into flags and pennants, but it only has this article here. Written documents. So, as, as a guide to fakes, it's very, 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 very poor. Some only get a mention. These are reprint documents. But some go into very poor detail, hand stamps. Well, hand stamps have come a long way because the Polish ones are actually uh, laser etched in bronze now. So, again, it's completely out of date. Then you have sugar balls. So, it's now of no use whatsoever. When this book was new, it was shit. And I think the reprint is still the same. So, if you buy this book, thinking that it's going to tell you everything you need to know it won't because although in the contents it looks impressive in what it describes you know it goes through all the daggers it's not a very good guide at all um i'll read this introduction anyway <clears throat> the antiques trade has for a long time <clears throat> had to suffer an influx of reproduction and copies of virtually everything that is considered rare or valuable but no field of collecting <clears throat> has ever been so saturated by fakes as third Reich military is today. The collecting of Nazi regalia began almost before 1945 during advancing Allied soldiers and during the 1950s and 60s such was the worldwide demand for all types of third Reich items that several dealers began to have it crudely reproduced and passed their fakes off as genuine articles. Often as great profit. The 1970s and 80s witnessed an even bigger boom in the creation of improved fakes to meet an ever increasing demand. When my book, A Collector's Guide to Third Reich Military, was published by Ian Allen in 1987, it was generally greeted with some approbation as a handy reference work, summarising the entire range of subject matter from scratch, something which had never been done before. Yet while it included sections describing all the main specialist areas of the hobby, restoration, preservation, values and list of dealers, as well as a fairly comprehensive glossary and bibliography, by far the most enthusiastic response was prompted by the hints given on reproduction identification. These were in verbal form only, since all the photographs used in the book were of original items. This companion volume is a direct result of that response. Readers will see that I have again devoted a section to each of the main specialist areas of Third Reich collecting, 
as methods of fake detection obviously vary depending on whether the particular item under consideration is a badge, dagger, peak cap or whatever. Each section describes the differences between originals and copies, which in my view it actually doesn't okay. And these descriptions are backed up by illustrations showing a wide range of reproductions <coughs> and again it doesn't okay it doesn't show the better quality reproductions that were available at that time when this book was new um, of both good and poor quality often in direct comparison to their genuine counterparts new fakes are constantly being devised and all ones improved upon and it will be impossible to cover all reproductions in existence but unfortunately it covered them just from one source um, <coughs> And in the belief that a picture speaks a thousand words, I hope to convey to readers the idea that there is, in the majority of cases, a way to identify not only a copy from an original, but also one type of reproduction from another and one genuine maker's reading from another. This work is the first in its field, blah blah blah, but it isn't. It's, in my view, this book is, it's an extremely poor book. Okay. And it's, it's, it's my earnest hope that this book will prevent at least a few readers from being so defrauded, disappointed and embarrassed. Well, I can tell you folks, if you buy this book, you will be defrauded, disappointed and embarrassed. Because as a book on detecting the fakes, really, it's a freaking embarrassment. And it's never been improved upon. So in my view, this book is best avoided because it will tell you nothing. Okay.